There are many cheap Chinese solar lamps, garden lights on the market. At least in the Netherlands where I live and I'm absolutely sure in Europe, Germany, France, etc. etc. Uh, you can find uh, more or less all the same circuits. The same cheap garden lamps, they cost approximately uh, 4 euros or so. And the problem with these garden lamps is that they uh, deteriorate within one year or so and then everything is over, everything is thrown away, etc. etc. I have already paid attention to that problem. I think it's a big problem. Uh, and then I mean worldwide, because precious metals are thrown away, um, electronic circuits are thrown away, quite intelligent chips are thrown away, resistors, etc., etc. And I think it only uh, uh, fills the landfills or whatever more, perhaps all these old electronic units are burned, I don't know that exactly, anyway. Uh, they have to be, that's at least my opinion, uh, to be recycled. Of course with these tiny uh, electronic circuits that's a big problem. Uh, how to recycle that? Perhaps you can uh, put them into a grinder of whatever uh, sort, grind everything, anyway, I think that there's no real problem uh, when we are talking uh, about recycling of these uh, simple, say, Chinese garden lamps that are everywhere. Anyway, at first let me show how they work. I will switch off now the lights. And when it's okay, all these beautiful, small uh, Chinese lamps, garden lamps, light up. And I have made an adaptation. Uh, I took out the, the LED strip out of the original uh, garden lamp, mounted it in a here, in a glass jar. That could be closed off completely uh, for moisture, etc. And there's some chemical inside here uh, that takes up the moisture. So this can work for a quite long time. Uh, I want to show, and this is the aim of the video, the two chips that are used in this in these uh, Chinese garden lamps and how to connect them, uh, perhaps how to repair them. That's also uh, important. Uh, these uh, simple uh, units often fail purely due to moisture. Contacts get corroded, um, copper gets corroded, etc., etc. And in my opinion, that's a kind of pain. In a certain way, I cannot accept it. That so many beautiful uh, and worse, uh, worse full uh, components are thrown away. So that's the aim of this video. So I tested and tried to. And they are here. This is the first chip. It's model A. I've named it model A. This is model B. And these are more or less common chips, common circuit boards uh, where you find here, for instance, such a chip. And nowadays they are often a very, very simple. It's a four, four pin chip. It's here. Four pins, they do the whole job of, say, um, 
making the circuit work when it gets dark. The, <coughs> the solar cell is used for two purposes, both as an LDR, so a light uh, dependent resistor, and also as a, um, a unit that can pick up energy from the sunlight. So a double, double function. In the past, these uh, chips were, in, and I, when I'm talking about the past, I say five years ago, ten years ago, it was more, much more complicated. But nowadays we only find such a small chip, a resistor, perhaps a diode, etc. And here you see exactly the same. These circuits are made nowadays, 2022, in a very, very simple way. Though, of course, such a chip can be considered as a kind of uh, intelligent chip that reacts on sunlight, etc. Anyway, so here are these two more or less most important or often used chips. Uh, this is, both chips are here showed. Uh, at their front, and I will show the back side, especially here, and of this chip, and I will show the chip in real, because it's in that glass jar. So, this is one, one of the chips that I show in the video. It's this one. With that nickel cadmium or nickel manganine hydride uh, battery inside. And that chip here. And here we see a Schottky diode. I've tested that, searched, it on, searched that on the World Wide Web. And it was quite new to me. But on the other hand I can understand it. Because a Schottky diode has a very low barrier voltage that could be ideal in certain uh, applications um, where that's necessary, especially in solar, these kind of simple solar circuits. Anyway, so this is that chip again here. And here is the schematic. And we look at it from the front. Pen over somewhat. The positive of the solar panel, and that's this solar panel by the way, such a solar panel, goes to the Positive of S, S means solar, so positive of the solar, negative of the solar, you can see that printed on the circuit board, negative of the solar, positive and negative is quite logical, you can measure that, etc. Here is that shot key diode, and well, that's more or less all to tell. This other chip, by the way, uh, was quite uncommon to me. I did not know uh, exactly where it came from. There are also no indications uh, on the circuit board. So I had to find it out. And that chip is here. The only indication is that we can read that it is K6057. K6057. Here you see the circuit board and there is only a resistor. There is no diode here. So I had to find out how it worked. Of course, say, when you take such a circuit apart, you surely you will directly see how the solar panel has to be connected, uh, where the um, the battery is connected, the uh, nickel cadmium or manganine battery is connected anyway. But, of course, it's interesting. 
again the front page no, sorry the front of the circuit board and this is the back side and that's perhaps more important to show how uh, this chip has to be connected to the solar panel also such a solar panel tiny solar panel say of four cells and the battery and it's all showed here this is the name of the chip uh, perhaps this is a five so uh, so a digit not a letter of the alphabet I don't know that exactly I could not find that out but in general this is the type number and here is a close view on how to connect the solar panel and the nickel cadmium or nickel manganine hydride battery so perhaps interesting when you want to repair such a thing uh, you can of course skip that tiny cell and use a sort of more or less a mature big cell instead of that uh, tiny cell here uh, with such a big cell of course you can um, charge uh, in, a, in a much better way energy out of that solar panel so the LED will light up for much a longer much for a much longer time etc etc so that has everything to do with repair because these uh, simple cells cheap cells they often explode in a, in a certain way and then of course I don't mean that they really explode but they swell up and then everything is gone I can demonstrate it uh, anyway so this is a good idea to give your cheap Chinese garden lamps a better life before they end into the grave thanks for watching